should think big. Is that croc? Can you see that? Yeah. Clearly the water is full of crocodiles. This is exactly where the crocs will be. I don't know what I can do to scare them them off. Man has always battled nature. Bit to conquer it. I'm explorer Ed Stafford, and I've put myself for extreme tests of endurance and isolation to become a survival expert. But surviving on my own, in the middle of nowhere, with just a camera, has become well within my comfort zone. That was easy. I want to evolve, to take things a step further, and find out what I'm really made of. So I've decided to go up against the world's toughest survivalists. Good luck, Ed. You'll need it. You're not. You'll get taken out. A head-to-head -head race. Half a mile of hostile terrain. In a bid to prove to myself that I am top of my game. And this feels very, very dangerous now! It's not about beating my chest. It's about taking my skill set to the next level. In the most authentic, realistic survival challenge possible. Next up, I'm facing former Royal Marine Aldo Payne in the croc infested mangrove swamps of Borneo. I've come here to the jungle to beat Ed Stafford at his own game. Survival expert versus jungle expert. We'll see who comes out on top. Ah! Ed Stafford, you invited me to take you on head to head. That's a decision you're going to regret. <laughs> Fascinated to see who wins in this competition. Aldo's a former Royal Marine, he knows his stuff, and um, importantly for this environment, he's extraordinarily fit. Well, I'm fit and strong, I can grizz through most things, but having said that, I'm up against one of the best survivalists, and Ed is mega fit as well, you know. I guess we're just gonna have to see what happens. Hello, mate, how are you? Good. We need to stop meeting in places like this. <laughs> Huge amount of respect for the Royal Marines. I, I attempted to become a Royal Marine um, officer when I was younger and didn't get in. To go up against someone like Aldo is going to test me massively. Yeah. The mangrove is specifically going to be one of the toughest in terms of the environment, which is why you're here. <laughs> jungle training in the Marines is quite a long, drawn out process, but the number one rule is you don't fight the jungle. You will. Aldo, I think, is going to be one of the toughest competitors. I really do think with this that Ed is sort of exercising a few personal teams. Maybe he's hoping, well, if I can breach more Marine, then I am, you know, proving that I could have been a more Marine. I've asked my old friend Woody to design a course that will push both of us to the limits of our abilities. After a distinguished career training elite soldiers to operate in hostile environments, Woody knows a thing or two about survival. I'm going to be dropping Ed and Aldo literally out to sea. They're going to have to swim ashore. Once they get ashore, they're going to have to negotiate mangrove swamps, tributaries full of and then get into the jungle proper. Once they get in there, they're going to head north. Then they're looking for an observation tower. That's where I'll be meeting them. First man out will be the winner. Ed and Aldo will be trekking over 100 kilometers with nothing but a machete. My course designed to mimic special forces training at the elite jungle warfare school located here on Borneo. You really do have to take in this information about the clock threat. Now, that is a very, very Basically, if you in your heads, that water is electrified. Yeah, if you go in that water, you're going to get a shock. My game plan is to smash it. Good luck, Aldo. Time to get in there and uh, beat Stafford. Jumping in the water, but I'm going. Type inside, wait for no man. Come on, let's go. Let's go. The bottom isn't solid at all, it's just mud. So, right down here on the front, you have the red mangrove that has the very long sort of root systems that reach down and into the mud. Getting stuck in that mud is going to be incredibly unnerving. I think very, very quickly they're going to realise just what the hell they're in. What am 
we're walking over now is this sort of wall of thick tangled mangrove roots. I've got to get over moving fast over this ground as possible, but I'm taking quite a lot of risks at the moment in terms of slips and falls. But I just want to put some distance between me and Aldo. Smells of rot everywhere. The smell is hydrogen sulfide that can kill you. Build up of breaking down organic matter. <laughs> that might be me that's the decaying organic matter shortly. You need a massive sense of humour. Definitely feeling it. The wood stink, this is disgusting. I really care about this competition. I did fail to get to the Royal Marines. I was absolutely devastated about it at the time. Now, there's something about going up against a Royal Marine, which has brought it bubbling up to the surface, and I want to win. I probably want to win. This is deep. This is classic croc snatching territory here. Is it worth taking a risk? I'm already starting to shake thinking about it. You know, worst case scenario for these guys in there is having an encounter with a crocodile. If you just happen to be in the wrong place, they can just launch out with explosive speed and it's game over. Come off. I'm gonna have to use some of these vines. Right. Right over the middle. a broken tree up ahead literally a branch that has just snapped and formed a natural bridge over the river and if i can get across this channel then this obstacle is out of the way and so i just need to pray that this branch doesn't deconnect from the the main tree otherwise i'm straight down into the water worked all right let's go Let's make some ground north. <coughs> There's nothing like the motivation of having crocs in the water to make you get out fairly quickly. But I have learned maybe not use dead trees for crossing croc infested water. The tide is now coming in quite fast. Clearly the water is full of crocodiles. I would say I've got about an hour left of light at maximum. I need to start thinking about finding somewhere to tuck up for the night. I don't have a huge amount of time. The sun's getting low in the sky. Albeit I'm not making any more of a shelter than just a platform to lie on. As far as gills and drills go, Ed's done a shed load more survival stuff than I have. And I've done a lot more jungle schlepping than Ed, potentially. I don't think any of that matters here. I think the mangrove is a complete leveller. Thankfully. It is now almost dark, and I need to tuck myself up in one of these trees. There's a tree straight through there with um, almost like a Y-shaped branch, and that's what I'm going to wait for. Just slightly worried that if we do fall asleep, <laughs> fat chance I'm actually gonna fall out of here into the water. So I'm literally just taking my belt. In Africa, I've heard stories of people using their belt to stop them falling out of trees when there's been lions below. It's a different apex predator, but the, the risk is still the same. basically around the mangroves, just keeping an eye on the guys. The um, boat driver says he just saw a croc um, as we're passing. It's a very real danger of sleeping out here. You've got to get yourself very high up into the canopy. I'm strutting. Sleep. But today's a new day. Can't help but be aware that Aldo is smashing it. 
fear that mangroves is... Therefore, it is so difficult to stay calm and stay centred when you know that somebody else is racing you. And I cannot let that get the better of me. Come on, Ed, let's go. It's the second day of the challenge. Aldo seems to have really pushed on ahead of it. Aldo may have used his jungle knowledge to pick the right path. You never feel that rested when you're sleeping out like this. Well, that's the problem with being in such a hostile environment, that your brain is so on edge and it's so queued up, so ready for action. I just need to smash through it. Both guys took off yesterday a bit, pulling the china shop. They just went for it. At some point, they're going to need to stop and take stock of the situation. It's just going to be absolutely energy sapping in there. It's a snout looking thing over here. And this could be my first meal. What I do know is that because this is salt water, I can, I can risk eating it raw. There's a lot less harmful things in marine animals than there are in river animals. And as disgusting as this looks, this is meat. This is fats and proteins, and this is actually going to give me energy. Now, anything that I can get down me is a win. This smells like mangrove swamp. I've got to take every opportunity to eat as much as I can. <sighs> that wasn't very nice. <laughs> it's just everything in the mangroves takes so much time. That's like quicksand, just so debilitating. Pushing into the different mangroves. These are the roots of the black mangrove, and what they do is these effectively let it breathe when it's when the tide goes out. This place here is flat, it means that I can get up some good speed. You can see the, the glint of the sun there. So obviously, sunrise is in the east. I'm heading north, and the mangrove is just getting thicker and thicker. see through there there's a lighter tree color that is not a mangrove and i've just got to get across it come on you can do this <clears throat> solid ground. It feels different, it feels fresh, it feels like a forest. The ground actually does slope down. In front, just down there, there's water. If I turn around to my right, down there, there's water. There's water all around me. No. No, 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 no. Still in the middle of the mangroves, but I'm on an island. Ah, I'm not out of the mangroves yet. The tide's just started to come back in now. I'm gonna end up being stranded. Try and keep moving. Come on. That takes a lot out of me. I don't have much more energy. Maybe I have to find a better way of navigating. Termites smash through the jungle without even paying attention to nature. And maybe for me, I need to start behaving in a way that's harnessing nature rather than just using brute force and ignorance. This is rattan, and you can tie it in knots, and it won't break. It's got amazing properties of being both flexible and extraordinarily strong. And I need to remember who I am. I've been trying to out out though. I've been trying to out Royal Marine, the Royal Marine, and that's daft, isn't it? My actual skill set is bushcraft. 
that's where I start coming into my own game and that's where potentially I can get one over Aldo. It just feels like I'm leaving this island better prepared, far better prepared to be able to go back in the mangroves and smash it. I can't stay on these. Although it looks like an island, this will be completely covered. This swamp land is definitely off territory here. I need to try and see if I can get it over onto the far side, but the problem is as well, this is day two, and uh, I haven't eaten in hardly any water. Maybe I've been a bit foolhardy and smashing on, and you know, it's taking its toll now. Physically, I'm pretty whacked. I'm gonna have to find a better way of crossing this. I need to try and knock this tree down and I can climb over. It's only about 20 feet across. What I want to do is put a notch in this side in the direction that I want it to fall in, but mangroves are bloody solid. That's my marker. Come on, you. Yeah, no, 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 the wrong way. It's a lot of wasted energy and a lot of wasted time. And we've still got to get across the other side. I'm actually excited again about this race. There's something about moving at pace over these black mangroves, being able to actually smash it. It's just lifted my spirits altogether. People say that mangroves are possible to go through, but there's so many different species of mangroves. This mangrove is quite conducive to moving fast. The threat of the rising tide, I've got no option but to um, stop. But I don't actually think that's a bad thing. I think I, I do need to take the time over the last couple of hours of the day to consolidate. My idea is that if I can tension the vines between three trees in a tree, what I'm hoping to do is to windlass. I'm creating a tensile force tight enough to hold my weight and yet not too tight to snap the vines. I'm relying on this to get me up and out of the threat of crocodiles. <laughs> might just work. I've added wind lasses as almost like uh, cross pieces on the inside when the tide comes up potentially even lighting a fire on top of this. It's all too easy to think that if you're racing through this environment that you would just smash it. It's a survival challenge not just a physical race and so things like bushcraft really do come into play. I'm upping my ability to to look after myself basically. So frustrating. I'm just going to go for it. It's, uh, it's too late in the day to be faffing around here. This is the main river here. This is exactly where the crocs will be. I don't know what what I can do to scare them. I'm off. Exhausted. I still need to find somewhere to sleep tonight. I'm just uh, collecting mud so that I can pack it onto the um, raised fire platform. I'm going to keep the fire nice and contained, nice and small, but that will just stop the fire literally burning down through the platform. If I get a fire going, I ward off mosquitoes and I can sleep. Yeah. That came to the surface, breathed and sunk down again. I'm shaking, man. I was just shaking. Come on, calm down. Calm down. I don't know anyone who's lit a fire in a mangrove. If I can make a fire tonight, it will make all the difference. It will make making this race platform worth it. I think I've got it.
Fire! Fire! Crocodile spotted just as I was trying to make the fire. Tide coming in. I've never felt more pressurized. One more relief. Reassuring flicker of orange. It's about 20 yards to our front end. We've seen three or four crocodiles just as we've paddled in here. Are you asleep with that potentially underneath you? I don't know. I am feeling somewhat vulnerable right now. My back. It is. It's less than an arm's distance away from the water. If a crocodile was to see me as opportunity. generally heading north. Three days is a long time in mangrove, but the body needs something like 70 to 80 calories an hour just to sustain its normal metabolic actions. Doing what they're doing in there, they're just going to be burning up calories, and those calories have to be replaced. If you want a good weight loss plan, this is the place to come and do it. I've seen that I've got quite a long way to go, so restock, a bit of food, sort myself out. Good to go. I'm going to use these vines to make a crab trap. I've got the basic skills that I need to survive in here. This isn't normal bushcraft because we're on the run. Everything's just a quick fix. I just need to put some green leaves on that and that's basically a crab basket. So that's it. That's the crab trap set. It's just sat on the bottom. So I'll just keep coming back and checking that every 20 minutes, half an hour. a lot more bullish. I almost feel like this race against Aldo is an opportunity for me to see if I can beat somebody who is a, not just a Royal Marine, but he's a friend. All right, I need to bridge this gap to that island. Sighting of crocodile last night, I no longer want to take any risks at all. There's no part of me that wants to die. Bar in it, then potentially I can get up high and then lower myself across. Inherent structural genius of an A-frame is that because the legs are splayed, the fact that it gets wider as it goes towards the bottom means that the A-frame bar gets wedged down and, and actually tightens the more pressure is put on it. Okay, one A-frame structure complete. This is my control measure. Fingers crossed will allow me to to steadily lower myself. It's high. Okay, I'm up. Okay, it's working. and that's the main thing I can now reorientate get back on heading north and head towards the target okay let's go that's it he's on there Woohoo! see how he's trapped through the, the weave that was there sorry mate see how strong that is on that I've never eaten crab raw but that's a good to try and there we go and that's what we're after Raw crab. Seriously slimy. Mm. 
these are super high in protein, but this protein's a winner. It's good. And great start to the day. Late on day three, I'm properly hungry. My body is tapping into its reserves. It's long run out of the digested food within my stomach. That means I'm getting weaker. Through there, it's definitely different types of vegetation I can see up in over island. Every time I hit land, it turns out to be an island. That there is a leech. He's already started sucking quite a lot. I'm debating in my head whether I can uh, reuse the blood that he's taken out of me. If it looks like a worm and it wiggles, therefore I think that will be good bait. I'm just going to make myself some fishing equipment. If it is a race to the finish line, it's going to be the man with the most energy that wins, isn't it? Fish like the seven trap. Since it's a fishing rod that I can walk away from, um, it's got a trigger mechanism. If a fish takes the bait, the arm will spring up. And, um, <laughs> stupidly, I was standing over it when I said the trigger mechanism set off and it, it just lashed me straight across the eye. I think I was quite lucky there, to be honest. If all goes well, tonight I'm going to have fish for supper. Happy days. Catfish have got really, uh, really big spikes on the side. You can just see there and there. I just need to be careful because he's still alive. What's up, uh... <laughs> he's fishing, but that means he's more than likely got fire. And I haven't got a fire yet, so I might see if I can get close and try and actually steal some of that fire. fish. <laughs> stripped to the bone. Quite literally, stripped to the bone. <sighs> right, that's me. I am tired. I'm going to tuck myself up by the fire. Hopefully I have a good night's sleep. And tomorrow, I'm going to smash it. This morning, the sun is just beginning to get some elevation in the sky. Sun rises in the east, north is my direction of travel. Once I hit that ridge line, the observation tower is what I'm trying to get to. I got way too close last night and just basically had to bed down here. Not a comfortable night. I've had to leave about 25 minutes ago. We got all this. This is Ed's fire from last night. The fire's out, it's completely gone. I can use so I can use that. I can use that for my fire later on. I'm gonna take that. He might have won last night, but it's a long game stuff for that play. At the moment, progress is very good. But ahead of us, very very distinct change in vegetation. This is a nipper plant. Nipper palm is used by locals in Borneo for. Thatching for obvious reasons. They're huge palms that go up to about six meters tall. As far as I can see, it's just nipper all the way. This is exceedingly difficult to fight through. The nipper palm is the last sort of hurdle for them. The nipper palm is a very, very dense, incredibly tough wood. You literally have to hack your way through. These nipper palms 
they're the only palms that can grow in brackish salty water more importantly that's almost the end of the mangroves i just need to find a way of getting across now Ooh, i am dizzy everything just takes so much time to come up with ideas and constantly problem solving and it's it's tiring but i'm not giving it up that easily if i can use a knuckle of this super hard mangrove root i mean you can see how thin it is and how strong it is if i can tie that onto some vines as far over as i can and then just pull it back so it goes from there across as soon as i get in there i'll be smoking it there's absolutely zero chance ed's going to be able to keep up with me this is going to be perfect as a grappling hook tie a bit of rattan around the middle of that get that wedged over somewhere all right plaiting this is the most boring part about this challenge basket weaving course that's basically all it is this and that should tighten in this here come for you Stafford yes come on come on don't break it come on yes it worked it worked and I'm now into the jungle and that's the environment that I know best so long mangroves Cicadas are starting to pick up, which means it is late in the day. I think this is a good spot to camp for the night. If I get enough of these nippers together, lash them at one end, spread the base out, I'll be able to make a, a nipper palm teepee. So I'm going to try and make it so that the inside of the leaf is facing outwards and therefore the natural channel of the leaf is redirecting water away from uh, where I'm sleeping. I'm going to rest well. There is a huge tonnage of leafage above my head, and uh, I'm proud of that. Shelter's go. That's a giddy. I've got myself a nipper palm teepee. A nipper palm teepee to be proud of. A little pat on the back, Eddie. So I'm gonna use that. Try using friction to reheat the charcoal from Ed's fire to give me a fire. That's it, look. I may have put this fire together myself, but there's only one person that I need to thank for this fire, and that's Ed Stafford for leaving me a charcoal. And without knowing, he started sealing the lid of his own coffin. It's all depleted now. When, it, when I get heavy legs, I know that my glycogen stores are low. And a fruit like this is perfect for re replenishing those stores and smash it through the jungle. Coming down. Swatch this out. Knee bone palm. Inside there is a part of palm. I don't know how far I've got to go, but this is going to make me stronger. These are very, very thin. If you peel that open, these fibers is the heart of Pam. There's water in here. I know Ed, and I know how competitive he is. And he's going to be worried now. He should be worried now. I 
can see the guys have pushed the last 10 k's of the challenge. Nothing about this last leg is going to be easy though. It's now just a question of who's got the best endurance. As I can see my shadow on my right hand side, which is right, I'm still heading north. They are looking for this ridge line, but there are loads of ridge lines out there. Ah! Under the canopy, navigation almost non existent. So they've got to make sure that they are on the right way. Looks like the ridge line that I've been aiming for is a gully in my direction of travel, but I just want to contour around and make sure that I don't lose any height unnecessarily. My aim is not to lose any altitude, because up these hills is a beast. Heading on cardinal points at the minute. Stop cross screening. Straight lining at the cardinal point. Down and up, down and up. Not following the ridge line. It's hard work, but it gets you some height. Halfway through the fifth day, they're going to be completely exhausted. They've had very, very little fuel. They are going to be feeling this. They're going to be absolutely knackered. I'm clamping every step. My pulse is full and bounding. All the signs of heat exhaustion. Just keep an eye on me, mate, if I stack it. Two ridge lines. Go either way. It's just instinct, Ed, isn't it? Instinct, go right. Past cultures used to navigate using uh, instinct. They used to have in mind where they were going and then used to use the universe, use the forces, use nature to instinctually take them there. I'm a firm believer that if I can tap into that kind of energy, then that's the way to win. My legs are cramping. See the watchtower straight through there. I've got to just go straight down and go for that. That goes down 10 meters within three meters. Well, this is dangerous. Okay, I'm down the cliff. I'm on flat ground, but the vegetation is still tangled even down here. This is gnarly. This is horrible. Just watching the track of there now. I've got no idea where the Aldo is ahead of me.
Thank you.